the profitability of these gig companies. Now, before I jump into this, it's a very short uh, message here, but keep in mind, some sources are saying one thing, others are saying another. I've heard them both. So listen to what Dale says. He goes, hey, Pete, from the research that I've seen, companies like DoorDash still are not making any money. That always comes down to management. If they stay on the same trajectory, they never will. It's really sad. They're sitting on a gold mine and don't know what to do with it. Dale. So let me just say this. Whenever the reports come out, the quarterly reports about how these companies are doing and whatnot, um, it, it always shows that the companies are making a lot of money, but at the same time, they're losing millions of dollars as well. And what are some of the reasons for that? Well, some of the reasons why they're losing millions of dollars is mainly for the fact that these companies uh, get screwed over left and right. A lot of it, a lot of it is from canceled orders, from customers scamming the system with the fraud, saying, I never got my delivery. And you know, when orders sit at restaurants because they have no tips on them, and they just sit and sit and sit and sit and sit, and then the restaurants cancel, they get pissed, and then DoorDash ends up having to eat the cost, you know? So as much as they're making money, they're not at the same time. But at the end of the day, at the end of the year, they did actually make money. That's the thing. So what Dale is saying about the poor management, that definitely plays a huge part in it at the same time. But again, a, par a big part of the problem is that these apps are a new thing. Yes, I understand DoorDash has been around since like 2013, but in the public spotlight, you know, they've only really been around for four or five years that people have been using it pretty regularly, you know? So they're still making tons of mistakes as they go along. It's, it's a, it's still a, if you want to say, you know, in the, in the terms of, uh, the stock market or established businesses, they've only been around a short time. So with that being said, uh, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to screw up. There's going to be problems, you know? So it is what it is. You know, I, again, I just feel that over time, Hopefully time will heal all wounds and things will get better. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, but we'll have to just see, you know, how things unfold as time goes along. But is Dale wrong? Yes and no. You know, I love Dale. He's, he's a great guy. Uh, he's commented on tons of my videos. I think he's been watching now for a year or two. So Dale, I appreciate everything you're saying, but I get what he's saying. That's why I'm saying he's not entirely right and he's not entirely wrong here because at the same time, uh, they are making money, but they're losing millions and millions as well. You know, whenever those quarterly reports, all you gotta do is type in DoorDash quarterly report on Google and, and, you'll, and you'll find it, you know? So Scott is back once again, and, he and the subject of this is, so you think you've heard it all. This one, you'll, you'll recognize where it's going, but the ending is, is like, whoa. So he goes, hi, Pete, it's Scott again. I saw your post about the CVS person getting uh, DoorDash, uh, the, the CVS worker getting DoorDash fired from a while back. This reminded me of an instance. I had I, an, an instance. I had been top dasher for a few months. It was three or four months into the shutdown, the pandemic originally, working 12 to 14 hour days, seven days a week. And I was approaching two, two, the 2000 delivery mark. People were starting to move around, most of them going to get their own food just to get out of the house. Now, if you did food delivery during this time, you know the only faces that the restaurant saw for the past few months were delivery drivers, absolutely 100%. I pull up to Chili's at about 6.30 and approach the employee that has been handing me food for the last three months. He had a confused look on his face. When I told him I was here to pick up the order for customer X, he looked shocked and told me it had already been picked up by someone else a few minutes ago. All right. At first, I thought DoorDash sent the order to two drivers, so I called DoorDash support. They told me that was not the case, and in their system, it shows me as the driver for this delivery. They told me that was not, oh, so I took the phone inside Chili's so they could talk to DoorDash support. 
The store decided to remake the food and I waited as it was a $23 payout and five miles and would be my last order of the day. I called the customer and explained what had happened and I would be there as soon as possible. During my wait, the employee told me the guy came in and said he was p there to pick up an order for X. So he gave them the f gave him the food and he drove a black Dodge Ram with a chrome roll bar with lights on top. They finished remaking the food, food two orders of ribs. I, I drove the five miles on the way and I got a message from the customer saying they were in the pool house to the right of the house. So when I pull up in the driveway, much to my surprise, was a black Dodge Ram with the chrome roll bar and lights. I deliver the food to the pool house. The two girls were laughing and told me their, bo their boyfriend bought them dinner and he was in the house. Wow, I thought, he, I, wow, wow, I thought. I hit delivered and got my $23 and ended my dash and drove home. This guy ordered ribs, put them in her name, went and picked up the order for himself, then had me deliver free ribs to his girlfriend. This is the only explanation. How else would you know the store, time, and name of an order and drive a vehicle that matches the description from the employee at the restaurant? Just what kind of boyfriend offers to buy you dinner and then steals the food from the restaurant? Wow, wow, and wow. Uh, I'm blown away here, guys, okay? The scams just keep rocking and rolling. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you have to be very, very creative to come up with crap like this, okay? So, imagine this, okay? Just imagine it. This guy placed an order through DoorDash for ribs or whatever the heck you ordered. So he pretends to be a DoorDash driver himself because he knows the name and everything because he placed the order. He goes there, grabs the order, goes home. Then a DoorDash driver shows up, Scott, looking to pick up the same order. Then the guy knew that they were gonna remake the order and then he got free ribs. Dude, I, you don't want to applaud theft and I'm not but I will applaud his creativity. Wow, what a scam. Dude, again, I, I don't think it's going to hurt the Dasher unless like they cancel the order and then the Dasher gets half pay. At least you're getting half pay, but damn, dude, are people getting this desperate to literally commit theft for food? They should be prosecuting these people. I don't care, man. You're screwing restaurants over because now the restaurant had to make double, a double, a double order. For, for... I, I'm telling you, if you had told me this years ago when I first started, I wouldn't have believed you. Uh, again, these scams are getting crazier and crazier. I have not heard of this one until now. So, Scott, I'm sorry that happened to you. At least you got paid. But thank you for sharing this and raising awareness to other drivers. So if you guys are having issues where orders are being picked up, it literally could be the customers placing the orders themselves and picking them up and then getting a double order and having a driver send it to them. That's unbelievable. So more drama, more drama. There's always, there's always, there's always something to talk about, man. I'm telling you, unbelievable. Now this is an article, okay? A bunch of you guys sent this to me. So to every single one of you who sent me this, there was a lot of you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this because this one slipped by me until a bunch of you guys sent it to me. So back in Chicago again, the home city of Grubhub, interestingly enough. The city of Chicago filed two sweeping lawsuits against DoorDash and Grubhub for allegedly deceiving customers in using unfair business practices. The suits echo long-standing claims from restaurant owners that the platforms advertise delivery services for their businesses without their consent and conceal lower prices that restaurants offer directly to customers outside of, outside of the platforms. The city also claims that both platforms use bait and switch methods to attract customers with low delivery fees, only to charge additional ones when they are about to place the order. In separate statements, both DoorDash and Grubhub called the lawsuits baseless. 
A DoorDash spokesperson said the company has stood with the city of Chicago throughout the pandemic, waiving fees for restaurants and providing $500,000 in, uh, $500, in direct something. Uh, it got cut off. I apologize. Uh, in November, DoorDash stopped adding new restaurants that it doesn't have agreements with to its app. It also said that it will remove restaurants that don't want to be listed within 48 hours of being notified, which is good. Grubhub similarly says it removes listings for non-partner restaurants when asked. It said only a small percentage of such businesses have requested removal, which I don't know if that's totally true. The company said its contracts require restaurants to offer customers at least as, as le at least as favorable prices on its platform as available elsewhere, contrary to the city's assertion that it conceals lower prices off the platform. Every single allegation is categorically wrong, and we will aggressively defend our business practices, a Grubhub spokesperson said in a statement. We look forward to responding in court and are confident we will prevail. The city is seeking to end the alleged misconduct by mandating more transparency, interesting word, civil penalties and restitution for consumers and restaurants hurt by the alleged practices. The suites or suits, excuse me, <laughs> included include additional claims specific to each company. The city alleged that the that Grubhub deceptively shared telephone numbers for customers to connect with restaurants, but would charge the restaurants a commission for calls placed through those numbers, even when they didn't result in an order. The city also claimed Grubhub made imposter websites for restaurants to unexpectedly lure customers to its own platform. Grubhub has maintained that its creation of sites for restaurants does not violate laws, though it has ended the practice. The company also changed its phone routing system on August 20, uh, 23rd, so that calls from customers uh, seeking answers from restaurants not about an existing order will be sent directly to those businesses at no cost. The suit claims Grubhub's marketing campaigns to promote local restaurants during the pandemic were deceptive, while it allegedly forced restaurants to extend their contracts and cover promotion costs. It also alleged that Grubhub violated Chicago's 15% of emergency something got cut off again. Uh, Grubhub denied violating Chicago's emergency cap, there we go, and denied that its pandemic campaign was deceptive. The company said more than $500,000 that it raised in the campaign went to Chicago restaurants. The city claimed DoorDash misled customers about how their tips for drivers would be used. This issue has been the subject of a separate lawsuit from the Attorney General of the District of Columbia. DoorDash has said it changed its tipping method prior to the D.C. Attorney's General lawsuit. Uh, it reached a $2.5 million settlement with his office in November over those claims. Chicago also alleged that DoorDash misleadingly labeled a $1.50 fee placed on every order as a Chicago fee. The city claimed that it is wrongly, uh, the, the city claimed that this wrongly implied the fee was required by or paid to Chicago rather than DoorDash. So what does everybody think about this? Here we go once again, guys. DoorDash and Grubhub still getting in trouble for the same damn stuff. Getting sued over and over and over again. It's like, guys, look, the only thing I can think here is, is the following is that these companies make so much damn money that they just don't care. They just assume they're going to be sued anyway, and those are just uh, expenses that, that they're just figuring for already. That's the only thing I can think of, which, which is why they're getting sued so often. What do you guys think in the chat or the comments? Do you think that they just don't care about getting sued because it happens so often and that they just assume it's just going to happen anyway, which, in my opinion, is a crappy way to do business, but this is not one of the only situations. These aren't the only companies that this has happened to, you know, beyond the gig economy. So let me know your thoughts down below. So this comes from TK from TK's Garage, an awesome channel you should be subscribed to if you love cars. So DoorDash stealing revenue from drivers. Sneaky. Hey, brother, it's TK from TK's Garage. I'm not sure if you knew. DoorDash had signed a brand deal with us to promote the delivery service and recruit and recruit drivers by mentioning them in videos, etc. So I did a few. I did not know that, but that's cool. A subscriber reached out and said they were doing deliveries and every day or so, one of their second deliveries of the day would just disappear. Just the revenue. 
You could still see the amount of deliveries, etc., but the money was gone. He showed me proof on six occasions. So I said, screw it. I turned on the app this morning after the gym and did four deliveries. The total should have been $31.50 and I was paid $26. So I saw the issue myself. I contacted VIP support and they acknowledged this is a known issue. And unless a driver calls to get their money, it's just gone. Wow. I recorded the call. I'm going to edit it all into a video and I suspended my sponsorship with DoorDash because of this. Being this is your lane, I figured I'd let you know. Feel free to use my video when it's up later or today or tomorrow. And of course, I mention you in the video and will link to you as well. Can't believe they are stealing. Where is all the money going? TK. Now, depending on when you guys are watching this video, uh, check the links in the description down below to see if I have it linking back to his video. If not, I'll just put a link to TK, uh, TK's Garage uh, channel so you can subscribe to him. But that's some real BS, man. Let me tell you, because <clears throat> this guy's been watching my channel for a while. We've interacted. We've spoken a bunch. And, uh, he, you know, he's an upstanding guy from what I can see. You know, he's been running a very successful YouTube channel. And obviously, he's doing something right that DoorDash reached out to him for a sponsorship. You know, <laughs> DoorDash ain't going to reach out to me. That's for damn sure, because I, I run them through the ringer every time they screw over drivers. So, you know that I'm not in on it. So with that being said, man, why my, you know, they're saying this is a known issue, but it almost sounds like they're skimming dashers for their own pay. So that's some really, really, really sneaky stuff there. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. TK, I, I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say about it and drivers and dashers. Has this been happening to you that um, the second order or one of your orders during the day of you dashing, they just don't give you the pay for it. It shows that you completed it, but there's no pay. Let me know down below if you guys have experienced that because that's, that's some real crap, man. So TK, thank you for bringing this to my attention and all of our attention. So everyone say thank you to TK. I want every single one of you guys to go and subscribe to his channel. Turn that bell on. He's got some really, really cool videos. He goes to like uh, auto auctions uh, and he like flips cars and stuff, you know, buys and sells. Really, really cool stuff. And uh, I, I'd highly recommend it. So going over more of your feedback and sharing this information so we can help other drivers out. This, as you can see with the title, had to do with that video about DoorDash forcing unwanted orders onto Dashers so that they have to unassign them, which in, you know, which in retrospect, what it does is it lowers your completion rate, which gets them deactivated. This was the theory. This was from originally from Denadrian Smith a while back when I made that video. And you guys had some really great things to say about it because, you know, he was like, I'm getting these orders assigned to me that I didn't even accept and I don't want them. So I'm unassigning them and it's screwing with my completion rate. And it's going to put me up for deactivation if it gets too low. So SS Rojo said 98% uh, completion rate and 22% acceptance rate. As far as a dollar per mile it re or money per mile, it really depends on the time of day. But for my market, a dollar fifty per mile is my average and can keep you busy enough uh, to where you aren't sitting waiting for an order every 10 minutes. The thing now that DoorDash is trying to do on these no tip orders is to attach them to another order that's going in the same direction drop off wise where the other customer is tipping on the stacked order. So in all you're doing two orders and where one customer is tipping and the other is not but it still looks enticing enough for you to accept payout wise. They've been doing this for quite a while now so this isn't really anything new but it's definitely getting worse. That had three thumbs up on it. Christopher Armstrong said, I've been a dasher since February. I just made top dasher on Tuesday and I can tell a huge difference in my trips. I rarely see a $4 trip in the last couple of days. $7 to $12 is average. That had two thumbs up on it. Um, but something else to keep in mind with that, Chris, is uh, every market is different. So in your market, top dasher might be awesome and in another market, it might not be. Uh, Abel Duran says, uh, what about 
when they offer you two deliveries with no mileage or navigation on your phone screen and just the total payout. I always deny it. I remember one time I accepted and it wasn't worth it. Absolutely, you know, don't take the chance if you don't want to. Leon Manning said, that happened to me before. I got deactivated. Orders would pop up and make me jump into an order. When you start getting the same orders over and over, you know that's it with DoorDash. Leon, I'm very sorry you got deactivated, but this is exactly what we were worried about. Uh, Cincy366 said, uh, Dasher, fifth week, first two weeks was all right. 100% completion, wow, uh, nice. 46% uh, uh, acceptance rate. The trip's gotta be worth it to me because gas is high, over $4 a gallon, and it's more to your car than just gas. Oil, anti antifreeze, transmission fluid, etc. I use my Uber app more because they don't have an acceptance rating. DoorDash wants me to dash where they want me to want me to be, and I'm not a top dasher, which is BS. Exactly. Like, I mean, they like Uber Eats doesn't really care about the acceptance rating either, but I get what you're saying. Um if it's if it's slower, I will take one dollar per mile from Craig uh, Carter four hundred. If I like the positioning of the order, I might take ninety cents a mile. Usually shoot for two dollars a mile. So you can see here that some drivers and dashers are experiencing this, and some aren't at all. So the fact of the matter is, uh, and there was one deactivation, evidently because of it. So with that being the case, how are things in your market? Are you getting orders assigned to you that you never accepted and they're pushing these on you? Let me know your story in the chat or the comments down below. I want to hear from you.